Look, the Bonpon 50 Fathoms is irrefutably one of the three most iconic dive watches ever made. Whichever of these legendary divers you favor is entirely subjective, but a point of hesitation for me for the 50 Fathoms, within the context of my smaller six and a half inch wrist, was its typically 45 millimeter diameter build. At this size, it's 50.8 millimeter lug to lug length, while perfectly suitable for an average size wrist, was just too intimidating for me. To be fair, there are more compact Bathyscaphe models, but these don't have the OG icon's exact design. And there is a, for better or worse, exclusivity of the 40 millimeter size to rare limited edition models that are, well, rare and limited. Last year, we saw a first ever middle ground sized 42 millimeter model in the stainless steel 50 Fathoms 70th Anniversary Act 1. But again, limited edition. Now, however, the wait is over. We now have a new first ever 42 millimeter 50 Fathoms in red gold and titanium, and phew, they are not limited editions. To be exact, the diameter of the case is 42.3 millimeters. But let's be clear, while the case thickness of 14.3 millimeters by no means places it as the thinnest among the current models of the Mount Rushmore 3 of legendary dive watches, it's 47 millimeter lug to lug does make it the most compact across the wrist. So this is a huge development and a game changer for the wearability of the model for wrists like mine. The case remains a screw-down crown secured 300 meters water resistant, and it is still equipped with a large and legible sapphire cap timing bezel with a luminous timing scale. Whether in red gold or in titanium as we have here in hand, you have the option of a blue or black sunburst dial. Everything about these dials are identical to the layouts seen on the 45 millimeter models with applied numerals at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock, with applied indexes marking the remaining hours. The handset for the three central hands remains the same, and the date complication remains at the 430 position. All of the applied indices and numerals, along with the three central hands, are filled with superluminova for visibility and darkness. Out of the gate, there are plenty of strap configurations to choose from which is good considering it's awkward for aftermarket options 21 and a half millimeter lug width. But let's be clear, the straps are affixed to the case with hex bolts, so you're probably not gonna wanna play Strap Monster anyway. The hex bolts also ensure these straps are not popping off the case by accident, very indicative of Blancpain's commitment to creating true dive watches. Now, there are three dial matching strap configurations for the red gold and titanium models a tropic textured rubber strap, a sail canvas strap with a rubber under, and a NATO strap. Between these three, I would probably go for the sail canvas, but the tropic is the most faithful to the original 50 Fathoms. I would say the NATO is my least favorite purely because any NATO strap will add bulk to the thickness with its underpass, along with obstruct the movement. Exclusive to the titanium model, however, is a case matching bracelet. It is a brushed three-piece link bracelet with a triple folding clasp. In its smaller size, there is no sacrifice to the movement. In fact, it also uses the in-house automatic 1315 that has three series coupled barrels that allow the movement to offer a full five days of power reserve. It also has a silicon hairspring for resistance against magnetism. But while technical, the movement is also very handsome as well with snailing and glistening chamfers to the bevels of the bridges. Interestingly, Blancpain has also opted to utilize the historic 50s inspired winding rotor design. And as we have come to expect from Blancpain, it is made of solid 18 karat gold that is then NAC coated. And of course, gold with its greater mass offers more efficient winding. With this scale down, we ultimately have a much more apples to apples comparison between the three dive icons. You know which watches I'm talking about. But to reiterate, the numbers and specs reveal that the Blancpain 50 Fathoms automatic 42 millimeter has by far the longest power reserve, and it is also the most compact lug to lug across the wrist. It also happens to be the most expensive of the three, but when you consider the extended power reserve and flourishes such as finer movement finishing and a solid gold rotor, it is easier to understand, at least at the starting prices. And here's a bit of a price hack. If you opt 
at least in terms of the straps, for a pin buckle closure versus a deploying clasp, you stand to save a good chunk of money. So look, what I want to know in the comments below is which of these strap options is your favorite? Would you want this 50 Fathoms on the Sail Canvas, on the NATO, on the Tropic, or if you're getting the Titanium model, on the bracelet? Let me know in the comments below. The Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms 42 millimeter Automatic models are available now with the titanium models on a NATO or a strap with a pin buckle priced at 16,600 US dollars, 18,400 US dollars on straps fitted with a deployant clasp, or 19,300 US dollars on the titanium bracelet. For the red gold models, prices start at US $30,400 on the NATO or straps with a pin buckle, and $34,300 US dollars for configurations with a deployant clasp. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel for all the latest news, reviews, and watch content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.